We all know that eating foods high in omega-3s are good for us. When we're thinking about omega-3 rich foods, we're typically thinking about seafood. And the reason why omega-3s are so important is because including them in our diet can improve our heart health and our overall metabolic health. In January, I did a 14 day sardine fast and I tested my omega-3s before and after. And as expected, my omega-3s were very elevated after 14 days of only eating sardines. But I was really curious to see just how long those positive effects would last. So I stopped eating sardines and really any seafood for six weeks just to see how long my omega-3s would remain elevated. I had some very interesting results and I was surprised. I think you're going to be surprised too. I'm Jenny, I've been experimenting with the carnivore diet for over two years. And I do a lot of N of one experiments here on my channel that involve blood work, DEXA scans, continuous glucose monitoring, and continuous ketone monitoring. For this experiment, we are going to take a look at five different data sets of Omega Check blood tests, including the before and after 14 days sardine fasting, another check at the four week mark of not consuming any seafood whatsoever, and another test at the six week mark after not consuming any seafood. I'm also going to share the results of my very first first Omega Check, which I took in the summer of 2024. I wanted to compare that original Omega Check to the four and six week Omega Checks after not eating sardines for that long to see if I ever got back to that super, super low level of Omega 3s. And Again, very interesting results. But before we dive into all of this data, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Rivero. Rivero is an online clinic co-founded by Dr. Sean Baker that treats the root cause of chronic diseases. Did you know that over 65% of Americans have some chronic conditions such as diabetes, obesity, or an autoimmune issue? Chronic disease wreaks havoc on people's health, energy, finances, and quality of life. And our medical system is not set up to treat the root cause issues of these chronic conditions. And frankly, our healthcare system is failing patients. You only get to see your doctor for maybe 15 minutes. They just prescribe you pills and send you on your way. And forget about getting your conventional doctor to discuss nutrition with you. It's like talking to a brick wall. Rivero takes the time to listen and gives you a personalized plan that addresses your root cause issues. They first start by tackling your diet, focusing on a low carb, high protein diet that is based on scientific research. You get a dedicated care team with daily clinical support support and coaching. They monitor your progress with regular blood work, which you know I love. I get a ton of blood work and I think it's super important. They also help you monitor important markers such as blood sugar so that they can proactively customize your plan. Right now, Rivero is offering 10% off your first month. So if you want to take advantage of this deal, head to rivero.com slash Jenny Midditch. That's R-E-V-E-R-O dot com slash Jenny Midditch, you get 10% off your first month today. If you want to take charge of your metabolic health, Rivero is the way to go. Before we get into my actual data, I just wanted to touch on the Omega Check test in general, what it measures, how you can get one, and then we'll dive into the test results to see just how long the positive effects of sardines last after you stop eating them. For this experiment, like I said, I'm utilizing the Omega Check. I get this over on ownyourlabs.com. This is a $66 test, and you can save an additional 10% using my code Jenny at checkout. That is not an affiliate code. I just think that people should know their numbers and should save a bit of money when they want to get some blood work done. The Omega Check is basically just measuring your Omega 3s and your Omega 6s. Omega 3s are what we want to, you know, have increased. Omega 6s, we want to have a lower level of them. When you're looking at this test, you can see the Omega Check number at the top. That's basically just the sum of all your Omega 3s. Then they give you a relative risk measurement, low, moderate, and high. If you have a low, that just means that you have a low relative risk of having a cardiovascular event, you know, in the future. That's just based on how many omega-3s you have in your system. Again, it's just a relative risk marker. It's not an absolute. This isn't gonna guarantee you're not gonna have a heart attack, but that's what that measurement means. Next up, you have the arachidonic acid and EPA ratio. You want this to be lower. And then you go into your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. Again, you want this to be as low as possible. That just means that your omega-3s are nice and high and your omega-6s are lower. Then you go into your omega-3 total and the omega-3s that this blood test is monitoring are EPA, DPA, and DHA. Then you look at the omega-6 total and then the two omega-6s that this test quantifies is arachidonic acid and linoleic acid, which are like the two main 
omega-6s out there. So that is what this omega check is measuring. Let's take a look at my omega check before the 14 day sardine fast. And honestly, it was pretty good. My omega check number came in at a 7.1. My arachidonic acid to EPA ratio was a 5.9. And my omega-6 to omega-3 ratio was a 5.8. If you take a look at my total omegas, that's just basically the omega check number, 7.1. And then all of my omega-3s look good. EPA 2.2, DPA 1.1, and DHA 3.8. My omega-6s were a 41.2 with arachidonic acid being 12.8 and my linoleic acid being a 26.4. Like I said, I had been consuming seafood sardines a lot over the past few months. So these results are looking pretty good for an initial baseline, you know, before I'm doing this 14 day sardine fast. So now let's look at my results after the 14 day sardine fast. And you will see some improvements here. My omega check number was an 8.3. That just means my total omega threes were at an 8.3. My arachidonic acid and my omega six to omega three ratio both declined. Again, you want those to be as low as possible. So that's good. My EPA went up to 2.9. It was 2.2 before this 14 day sardine fast. My DPA went up to a 1.3 from a 1.1, and my DHA went up to a 4.1 from a 3.8. My omega-6 total also declined a bit, 39.6 down from 41.2. And you can see my arachidonic acid went up a little bit, 14.1, but my linoleic acid went down by like three points, 23.6 from a 26.4. So after that 14 day sardine fast, I stopped consuming sardines, really any seafood whatsoever. And I wanted to do this for a minimum of four weeks because I wanted to see, okay, how long are these positive effects going to last? We're always told that we have to consume a certain quantity of omega threes every month in order to keep them elevated, to kind of like reap the benefits of elevated omega threes, you know, improved heart health, improved metabolic health and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people really don't like seafood. So I think it's important to know just how long these positive effects of the omega-3s are going to last so that people can only eat the amount that they absolutely have to. Now, there is of course a caveat to this. I had just done a 14 day sardine fast where I was consuming four to six cans of sardines on average every single day. It stands to reason that my omega-3s were so high because I was consuming a lot of seafood. But I will say, even with the one can of sardines per day test that I will link right up here, my omega-3s were still just as elevated. My next experiment in this same vein is to figure out just how many cans of sardines per week I need to consume at minimum to see elevations in my omega-3s. And then I should probably do this, you know, four to six week washout period to see if eating that tiny amount of seafood, just how long the omega-3 effects will last then. Because for the people that really hate seafood, they're not gonna be doing a 14 day sardine fast. They're not going to be consuming four to six cans per day of sardines. They're probably going to wanna do maybe like one can a week tops or something like that, but will only consuming that tiny amount of fish result in an increase in omega-3s that is sustained over a period of time of not eating them? That's a really interesting question. That is my next test, so be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss that video. Let's move into the results of four weeks of not consuming any seafood whatsoever after doing that 14 day sardine fast. I didn't touch a single piece of fish in this period of time. And you can see that there was a drop in my overall omega threes. I went from an 8.3 to a 4.9, but a 4.9 is not tragic. If you look at the relative risk, I am at a moderate. I'm not at a high, so that's good. My arachidonic acid to EPA ratio understandably went up from a 4.9 to a 16.1, and my omega-6 to omega-3 ratio went to an 8.5 from a 4.8. My EPA dropped drastically from 2.9 down to 0.9, my DPA didn't really drop much at all, 1.3 down to 1.2, and my DHA also dropped a little bit. I went from a 4.1 to a 2.8. If we're taking a look at my total omega-6s, it only went up a little tiny bit, 41, instead of a 39.6, and my arachidonic acid stayed exactly the same at 14.1. My linoleic acid went up a little bit, 24.2 up from 
six. So after I got this four week result, I was kind of shocked. There's still a lot of omega threes in my system, enough to where I'm seeing the positive results here. So that is why I decided to push it another two weeks and see, well, after six weeks of not eating seafood, what will happen then? So let's take a look at that result. And we can see here that I went from a 4.9 to a 3.9 in my overall omega threes, but I'm still only in that moderate level of relative risk. My arachidonic acid to EPA ratio went up a few points from 16.1 up to 20.5, but you can see my omega-6 to omega-3 ratio basically stayed the same. It was an 8.5, it went up to an 8.6. I consider that just like flat. My EPA went down a little bit from 0.9 to 0.6. DPA only declined a little bit again from 1.2 to 1. And my DHA went down from 2.8 to 2.3. My arachidonic acid went from 14.1 to 12.4. And my linoleic acid, this actually came up as saying low, went from a 24.2 to an 18.4, though I'm not super worried about that. That's okay, it's right at the edge of this reference range for LabCorp and I'm sure it's completely fine. I wanted to start doing more sardine fasting. So I was like, okay, that's enough. You know, I'm not going to push it anymore. Maybe I could have tested again at eight weeks to see, but I did think, okay, this would be cool to compare that six week result to my baseline Omega check that I got, you know, about a year previous, because at that point I hadn't been eating any seafood and my Omega check was tragic. So was I still reaping benefits at the six week mark? that I was not at that original baseline. So let's take a look at that baseline Omega check now. You'll see that the numbers are much lower than the Omega check after six weeks of not consuming any fish. And that's pretty remarkable to me. I really couldn't believe that even after six weeks, my Omega threes were still higher than if I hadn't consumed any seafood at all. I would have assumed that my levels would have dropped down to be equal to that but it seems like the omega threes don't clear out of your system as fast as I thought they did. The benefits remain for a much longer time. So this was a really interesting experiment. I learned a lot. If you'd like to get this omega check for yourself, I've put all of the information in the description below and also be sure to check out Rivero. This is some root cause medical care that I think it's going to be revolutionary. If you're interested in seeing what my mercury levels were after consuming 100 cans of sardines in a month, I'm gonna link that video right here. And if you're interested in learning what my arsenic levels were after that 14 day sardine fast that we talked about, I'll link that video right here. Let me know in the comments what your favorite seafood is. And if you have any questions, please let me know those as well. I am very responsive to my comment section. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.